Okay, so the first question I have is why doesn't housing supply rise in line with defaults? In fact, um, housing supply does in fact go up with defaults. It's hard to see in that model and, and unfortunately we won't have time to explore that today. But um, the defaults feed back to the uh, housing supply in that model. So in fact supply um, should be going up, but you'll also notice that the defaults are, are um, smaller in uh, magnitude than the supply that's already there. We can, of course, play with that and make those numbers different and have it have a larger effect, which it probably should. Okay, is this housing model available on your site? Um, it, is, it is not yet available on our site. It will be available on our site. If you would um, like it before it's on our site, please feel free to email us and we'll be happy to send it to you. Do the graphs represent real data or hypothesized data? In fact, the graphs are completely hypothesized. And that is, that is um, one point I want to make about uh, re reproducing behavior of a model. I'm not trying to reproduce the exact system. I'm trying to test a hypothesis about what is happening within the system and um, what the implications of that may be. I don't need exact numbers in that case. I did use interest rates that are, uh, in fact, pretty uh, close to what are the real interest rates. I did, in fact, use a, uh, a, a housing value uh, that it was uh, the average housing value was close to the real housing value in thousands of dollars. Um, so I did use some parameters that were fairly close to the real numbers. I, uh, the supply and demand are, are, you know, completely made up numbers. I, I'm not, I didn't look for the actual numbers. I could modify it to use the real numbers. but. It's more a qualitative model than an exact calibrated quantitative model. Do the reference mode represent hypothesized behavior over time? Yes. In, in fact, they, they, they represent, traditionally they represent um, historical behavior up to a point and then hypothesized behavior after that point. In this case, um, this has already happened, so we have seen um, this behavior and what is what is hypothesized is that the interest rates are, are in some way and the bank deregulation is somehow driving that. So that's really the hypothesis in this model, not that this will happen. Although we could have built this model a year ago and we would have gotten the same results, whether or not we hypothesized that, that was, that's what would happen. Um, is there a balancing loop between housing supply to housing demand? And yes, the answer to that is definitely a yes. It goes through price, though. It's not direct. Um, how many less nesting levels are available? We have um, as many as you need. There's there's no there's no uh, limit inherent in the program. You'll run into limits with memory or disk space or whatever. Um, so there is um, there's no practical limit for what you may want to do. How is the module concept different from the submodel concept of a couple of versions earlier? Uh, that's a very good question. And another good question would be, how is it different from uh, the sectors? Uh, let me talk about the sectors first, because the module actually replaces the sector in, in a way. Um, modules and sectors are very closely related. The difference is, uh, within the module, using modules, you're able to capture the dynamic hypothesis right at the top level of the, of the uh, model in a causal loop diagram. Um, you could do that more or less with process frames at the top level, on the interface level, with sectors. But uh, with modules, it's just captured right there on the model, and it's much simpler. You can also do multiple levels, which you cannot do with sectors. In addition, you can share, um, you can share your modules with other people just by passing the files around, which you also cannot do with sectors. How is it different than submodels? Submodels are, um, again, are the same idea, but they're only one level deep. And submodel specifically required a f inflow and an outflow, which um, modules do not. You can, of course, have flows between modules, but you'd connect them with connectors and using uh, cross-level ghosts, module inputs and outputs, um, just as you might between sectors. Do the run specs have to be the same for each module? Uh, long term, the answer is no. Short term is the answer is in 9.1. Yes, they, they are all the same. Um, however, it's been programmed to allow us to relax that restriction in the future. Are there any changes to sectors in version 9.1? No. Um, 
any preferences to using modules versus sectors. Again, if you use, if you're building a dynamic hypothesis and you draw the causal loop diagram, you can just turn that causal loop diagram into a model directly just using modules. And if you have several levels deep, then you're not going to want, or a complex model. Sectors are, are, are more cumbersome. For a small model, I don't think there's, there's a large difference, and you can easily translate between sectors and modules. Let's see. While I'm waiting for other questions, I'll just show you our contact information, which is right here. My email address is at the bottom if you need to send an email, and so is Joanne's if you have other questions. And I'll remind you that we'll be sending all the questions and the answers around in an email to everybody, as well as posting the webinar on our website. Uh, we've seen the benefits of the module framework, but can you show us the equations? Ah, someone wants to see the equations. Great. Let's go look at um, the equations. Here are the equations, and you'll notice the listing looks very similar to, um, to, to a, a sectored ordered um, listing of equations. So there are the equations. If you need any help upgrading, feel free to email support at iccsystems.com to get 9.1. If there are, I'll wait just a minute to see if there are any further questions. Okay. Um, we're getting a number of questions, and we'll sort through the questions as we, um, after the, the session, um, in order to end on time. So thank you for joining us today. Um, I hope this helped you figure out um, how you can use 9.1 to your advantage and um, help those of you who have it how to use some of the features that, um, some of the new features. Thanks again for joining us. We'll be sending you um, a list of the questions that we received with all the answers. And again, we'll be posting this webinar tomorrow. Thank you. <coughs>